Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Wisdom Wednesday from here in beautiful Austin, Texas. It is like spring weather out there in the middle of January right now, 75, 80 degrees. I'm Mark Sweeney, Chief Dentist at Austin Dental Spa. If you're tuning in for the first time, let me give you a little idea of what we do every Wednesday on Facebook Live. We do a Facebook Live and uh, we talk about a different sign scientific topic every week and then we end with a health tip and uh, today is no different why am I holding these little miniature jumper cables well they're actually functional they hook up to another gadget uh, that's like a, a large battery pack and you can actually jump your car and uh, start your car from this it comes in a little kit but we're doing it just kind of for props uh, because our motto for the month of January is jump start January. So we got the jumper cables going. If you don't know what these are, then um, you're probably female. Um, we're going to get back to that uh, in, in just a minute um, with some more um, misogynistic, racist, whatever stuff. Um, so anyway, um, what we're going to talk about today in the scientific topic, this is really good. There's a couple of articles out there that deal with tooth loss and how that relates to health in the rest of the body. And so, you know, when I was in dental school 40 years ago, they taught us that over 50% of the U.S. adult population was m missing one or more teeth, and usually on average three to five teeth. Well, that was back then in the 70s, people that had gone through World War II, that greatest generation, they were in their 40s and 50s then. And so at least half of my dental school education was spent making appliances that replaced missing teeth, either removable or fixed into place, because implants really hadn't come into being at that point in time. Um, so we spent a good bit of time making dentures, making partial dentures, making bridges that replace missing teeth. Now they spend maybe 10% of the dental school curriculum dealing with that. They tell, put implants in, you know, so you take a couple extra years after dental school and you can learn to place implants uh, or you can send them to a specialist, a periodontist or an oral surgeon to have the implants put in. And then we build the teeth on top of the implants. But that's the most common way now to replace a missing tooth. But what are the big, what's the big deal about missing teeth? Well, um, we're going to talk about a little bit about everything. But first, here's a question. We're getting back into that uh, uh, thin ice territory, women versus men. Um, Who's more likely to go to the dentist and maintain their oral health? That's an easy one. Women. Women, I, I to told people when I designed this place, women rule the world. Women decide whether their husbands or boyfriends or kids are going to come to the dentist. They make the vast majority of the appointments, and they come in overwhelmingly more commonly than men do. Um, it, I don't have any evidence on why that is. Men tend to just not... Uh, take care of themselves quite as much as women do, but I would say uh, well over 50%, maybe closer to 70% of our uh, patients who come in regularly for cleanings are female. So y'all win, y'all rule. Um, there's an another one I thought was interesting. Statistically, it's been found that older Americans are keeping their teeth longer. And that was in 2016, and I would agree with that 100%. During my 44-year career in this profession, I have seen that people are keeping their teeth. We've got patients in their 80s and 90s now that have nearly all of their teeth or have all their teeth because preventive care came around in the 60s and it's just progressed beyond that and now most every large city in the United States is fluoridated water uh, in the drinking water except for San Antonio, Texas. They keep voting it down every time it comes up so they just quit bringing it up on the ballot. Um, but every other city over the over 100,000 people I think has fluoridated water. That's made a big difference um, and there's fluoride in the toothpaste. You can buy fluoride supplements um, of all different kinds. So it's readily available. Um, so the problem is 
keeping your teeth longer means you got to take care of them longer. So like my 70 and 80 year old patients that still have their teeth, they're in here every three to four months getting their teeth clean because they want to make sure that they're protecting their investment and that they hang on to them. But um, there is a connection between tooth loss, which is our main topic today, believe it or not, tooth loss and uh, overall health. And they've drawn conclusions for the last 30 years that people with chronic disease states, uh, diabetes, um, you know, there, there are numerous ones that are uh, high blood pressure, or heart problems. Um, so people with a chronic disease like that tend to be more likely to lose teeth. And so this study said that six in 10 adults in the United States, I found this hard to believe and I went and checked it through sub several sources, six in 10 adults in the United States have a chronic disease. So that means 60% of the adult population in the United States is at higher risk of losing teeth. Um, how is that related, chronic disease and tooth loss? Well, let's talk a little bit first about what are three main causes of tooth loss. The first, the overwhelming number one reason people lose teeth is periodontal disease, gum disease, pyorrhea, they used to call it. Um, but it's beyond gingivitis with just some bleeding of the gum tissue. This is periodontitis means you're losing bone around the teeth and the teeth are getting loose. The gum tissue is way beyond just a little bit swollen. It's like really swollen and bleeds anytime you brush your teeth or even swish water around in there. We still see that even in Austin, Texas in 2023. Uh, once in a while, a patient will come in rampant periodontitis and we're talking about can we save any of these teeth or just do we just remove them all, put implants in and put dentures over the top? It still happens in today's day and day and time. But uh, periodontitis starts as gingivitis and then it just progresses uh, with the pandemic having just uh, happened in the last two and a half years, we're seeing a lot of people that hunkered down two and a half years ago and are just now starting to come back out in public. So we're seeing a lot more bleeding gums than we used to. And that's true all the way across. Uh, they've done surveys of dentists across the United States and they're all reporting the same thing. 40 to 50% increase in bleeding gums. So, uh, um, you know, like I've said, diabetes, other chronic uh, diseases can play off of, there's not a direct correlation, but m the less healthy you are, the more likely you're going to have uh, gum disease issues. And it works vice versa. If you've got people with gum disease tend to have other health issues as well. So take care of your teeth. Uh, number two reason why why people lose teeth is decay, severe decay, like decay that's deep into the nerve, causes them a toothache. They find a dentist that will see them that day, uh, numb them and take the tooth out. Pain gone, tooth gone. <laughs> but we still see people, I saw a woman just today that came in with a broken down wisdom tooth, 37 years old, um, no other decay in her mouth, but one, one of her wisdom teeth, half of it was gone and it was decayed all the way into the nerve. That obviously tooth needs to come out. Now, if it was up here in the front and it did that, we'd probably be talking about trying to save it. But that, that's, a, that's a tooth loss and that was because of decay. Um, the number three reason, and I'm uh, somewhat of a self-styled expert on this uh, reason, number three reason is trauma. And why do I consider myself an expert? Because 40 years of practice in dentistry in Austin, Texas, we got this University of Texas right down the street about five miles, 60,000 students, uh, 60,000 plus, and a place on downtown Austin called Sixth Street where they serve underage drinkers pretty routinely. And you get 60,000 students hanging out uh, in a place where tequila is flowing and you're going to have people get punching each other and knocking their teeth out or falling on the curb on their way to their car that night. Uh, all kinds of issues like that. Getting banged into while they've got a bottle of beer up against their teeth. I've seen all that. Uh, traumatic tooth evulsion. Uh, where if, if that were to happen to you, what do you do? Well, find the tooth. 
hang on to it, do not clean it up, do not put soap and, and water on it and scrub all that grody looking stuff off because that's the ligaments that will reattach. If it's put back in within 30 minutes, there's a high chance that it will reattach. Probably will need a root canal because a lot of times the nerves inside the teeth can't reattach to the nerves that go on up into the your brain. Um, so, uh, but if you can hang on to the tooth, put it in milk, keep it wet, don't wrap it in a dry napkin because drying the tooth out lessens the chance that it will reattach. But I have patients right now that that happened to over the last 20 years, some of them 20 years ago, the dentist reattached it, splinted it to the teeth on either side, just like a broken bone anywhere else, and it reattached and it's still in their mouth. And you would never believe that happened. Like I've said, a lot of times the, the nerve does not end up reattaching, and so they end up having to have a root canal, but they've still got their real tooth, and the splint comes off after a while. So um, if you break a tooth off, try to get in to see a dentist immediately. If it's two in the morning, that's going to be a little difficult to do. Hang on to the tooth, put it in a glass of milk, or keep it in a moist environment, wrap it in a wet paper towel, not a dry one, and get to a dentist as quickly as you can. Uh, what you don't want to do is touch the root part that's going to go back up in the tooth because our fingers typically have bacteria on them. Uh, like I've said, don't scrub it off with soap. I've actually seen that happen where mothers got a, found the tooth on the playground that their kid got knocked out walking behind somebody that was swinging. I had one kid years ago that was walking in a bowling alley and a bowler went back like that and caught him right in the tooth, knocked the tooth completely out. <laughs> so, like a Steven Seagal movie or something. Um, so, anyway, uh, now, what about if you just knock part of the tooth off, but not the entire tooth comes out? If you've broken it off, that's a diff whole different problem. There typically is a nerve inside there, so if you see bleeding coming from the tooth, it's going to end up needing a root canal. But a lot of times that piece can be re-cemented back on if you can find it. If you can't, we build it back up with either porcelain or composite material, but that is a salvageable situation in the vast majority of situations. So hope that's been helpful information. I hope you don't need that information anytime soon personally, but it's nice to know just in case somebody around you were to have a, a dental emergency like that. Now, health tip. We're going to talk about, we've had this unseasonably warm weather in uh, January after having a little bit of a cold spell right before Christmas. The rest of the country is still under pretty cold conditions up in the northern part. So there are three things that are still around uh, that they, they, we're not hearing that much about them. But um, the RSV, the, the flu, and COVID-19. COVID-19 is still around. It's not making people as sick and it's not sending people to the hospital. Hospitalizations are down this winter when all the experts thought that they were gonna skyrocket up again, that, that they were gonna start peaking, but that actually hadn't happened and they can't explain exactly why. But remember what I've been pounding home for three years now, you can do something about this. It's not like you just have to take your chances going out or wear a mask everywhere you go. Vitamin C, and vitamin D are your two um, main bulletproof vests to try to keep you from having these respiratory viruses because all of them uh, are, are uh, mitigated some by vitamin D levels and vitamin C is a good building block in your lungs to keep you healthy and to prevent these diseases from being able to take hold in your body. So uh, supplement with vitamin C, uh, most doctors say 500 milligrams a day. I say a thousand a day. I, th I take a thousand milligrams a day minimum, and I've been doing that for 30 plus years. Um, and I very rarely get sick. Um, and so take that for what you want. Um, a lot of people say when they started taking vitamin C, they don't bruise as easily, and that they their skin looks better, and they just feel healthier. So. That's my little tip. Supplements, uh, eat right, but the supplements are quick and easy over in the, that section of the grocery store. You go by and buy a thousand milligram tablets of vitamin C, take one every day. See if that doesn't make things feel better within a week. So that's my advice. Uh, we're 
talking about uh, jump start in January, and I will see you again next week for another version of Jumpstart January and Wisdom Wednesday.